Yes, it's duties and responsibilities, school liaison commander. Right. Student right. Yes, What was your change, Diane? I just pulled it out of the document. What was your change? I mean, your name's up there. What did you change, or what did you add, or delete, or whatever for that? Well, that your name—that's you up there, right, above Shirley? Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm just asking what it was that was changed. Because he, he doesn't know what changed. I don't know what was changed. Either. Okay, Diana wanted to change as a sworn Fairfax County police officer, the SLC's definitive chain of command is the patrol bureau commander for the Fairfax County Police Department. However, for day-to-day -day operations, directives, and general duties and responsibilities, the SLC's reporting authority will be the director of the OSS concerning the SLC reporting authority for day-to-day -day operations, directives, and general duties and then she added, in no event shall the director of OSS expand the SLC's or SRO duties and responsibilities for school administrative functions beyond those expressly provided for the MOU. See, I think the reporting should not be to the OSS. It should be to the principal. Correct. The school resource officer. Yes, I, in, in this particular thing, the importance of this. Uh, then that makes, that makes them a part of the administration. And in another part of the document, we say that, that the SRO is not a part of the administration. Yeah. Well, I still, okay. Yeah. I, I still think throughout the importance of all of this is that the principal be the primary person that the reporting should be to, and not the OSO, OSS uh, director, whoever it is. And I have no objection to that. I mean, I think I'm flexible either way on who the reporting is to. Our concern is to make sure that that person does not expand the duties based on our understanding that there's a lot of discipline requested by some administrators that request certain disciplinary actions be taken by SROs. We want to make clear that whatever we define the duties
Office of Safe and Secure Schools. So she, he also is above all of the school safe administrators. Did the word the, in the second the paragraph staff. is coordination in, in the existing MOU. Uh, and then when you go down to the next bullet, it talks about the command, which I just articulated. Uh, I have a command of the school liaison, commander, and all SROs. Okay. I, didn't uh, wanna, I, I, didn't wanna, I think one of the things is that throughout this document, we use we use SLC and SRO, and we can we're, in in this section of the SLC, you're actually describing the police structure. So you have a commander and that chain of command. What is underneath the school? At the school is the SRO. That's the thing that we primarily face. So there is no, there should be nothing like you're saying. It, there is no role for the principal to talk to the SLC. That's that's the police department structure within the police department. And so you have to understand that. But the concerns that uh, that Diane expressed, I think, are spot on, and they're covered under other sections of the memorandum where you talk about. Uh, uh, in, uh, arrests, searches and seizures and stuff like that. It very specifically says, SRO shall not be involved in this, SRO should not be involved in that. And that's maybe what I suggest, that this is talking about the structure for the, S, uh, the police department and how that command structure works. And then the other part that sort of tries to prohibit or prevent these guys from expanding or getting a mission creep to what they want to do, it's covered in other sections that deal with the, what they shall not do. Um, I guess that, I mean, I understand that distinction and it makes sense, but here we're talking about the OSS command over the SRO program, and so it seemed to me in Doobie's responsibility, so we want to make clear that, that OSS cannot expand the duties, and, and school administrators cannot expand the duties, so that some, you know, in this sort of more introductory Maybe so. But so are we okay with that language in there? Or do we need to change the wording in there? Because what I'm understand, from what I'm hearing is there actually are no recommended changes to that. Right. Because you're saying that the director of OSS, director of OSS, as well as the school administrators, neither of them can expand the, the administrative function beyond what's in the I'd like to see this and just remove, actually. And then emphasize what Randy is saying. It's the principal that you, the SRO reports to. Okay, that so there's also a recommendation to strike that sentence altogether. So any other, any other comments on that? Uh, I want it somewhere. I, okay. If you don't have it here. Who, who, who wants to struck? Because we can go to the majority, because we need to move on. Can we take it off and then recommend that when you review and write that you somehow embed that somewhere, that thought, that idea in somewhere in the Can final you version. put it in brackets and say can be moved or something, but once you strike it, it's out of here. Okay. I mean, I, I would just say leave it there and let us look at it as we prepare okay. for the Okay. Okay. Uh, Chair, may I make a suggestion just given we have half an hour left yeah. of us, presumably yeah. to our meeting. Um, at, at this rate, we all better get some sleeping bags in here because uh, it's we're not gonna get to the end. Uh, you know, I just went through being a lawyer. I annotated all 51 pages of comments. You know, they fall into, you know, half of, fully half of the comments fall into the category of, you know, SROs versus, you know, administrative officials, right? And then there are about four or five other buckets that it, that represents probably 80 or 90% of all the comments. There's miscellaneous ones that could be dealt with separately. But I think if, if we just talk about buckets of comments rather than specific line items, we can probably get agreement. You know, I mean, if, if we can all agree, SROs should play no role in, in administrative proceedings, right? Should have no administrative duties. And I, don't, I haven't heard anyone say that they should. Then, then any, if you establish that principle, and go through the other buckets and just have a few clear principles that we decide today, then you know uh, FCPD and FCPS can revise and line those principles and clear it up very quickly. I, I, I don't think those principles should be hard to reach agreement on, and then that guides their whole revision, the whole document. The superintendent said 
that last week? I, I, I think that might work in a perfect world, but I think the reason we're here is because that hasn't worked. Um, because we've had multiple conversations about school um, SROs not being administrators, and we're still here mm -hmm. having the same conversation now. So if it was that easy, I think the words, the devil is in the details, and I think we do need to kind of go point by point. And so I think we should use the opportunity. I, I, I agree with you, it's not realistic. I think everyone kind of made the point before this meeting started that the time frame was really condensed, and we need a lot more time to actually go through this. But I don't really have a whole lot of faith that if we just gave them principles, that we would get the results that we want. I appreciate that. I wonder if after the goal section at the beginning, if you create a principal section, just generally, you know, SROs shall play no role in the, in the administrative process, right? Make those principles very clear up front. Then anything that's in the subsequent document that conflicts with those principles has to be corrected to comply with the principles. You know, because if we can all just agree on the principles and have those explicitly stated right after the goals, and those principles are can even call them binding principles, then that trumps anything else in the document, right? Because ultimately, this isn't legislation, right? This is, and these aren't binding rules, right? This is a document that's, you know, can be applied in an interpretive manner. So, you know, having very clear principles up front, I think at MEM will help us all be on the same page or not be on the same page. Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of faith at this point. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is your recommendation. So you could put a notation on it. Could we let Matt give us, since he's already done all that work, could he give us one of his smaller buckets so we have an example? There might be okay. 10 or 15 we could knock off real quick. Would you give us a good one there? Please? Come on. Uh, well, time, time's of the essence, so give us a good one. Yeah, so uh, I'd say data reporting, like one issue that's come up in, in uh, Kofi's comments, uh, or what frequency of reporting should there be, annual or quarterly, right? That's like a very simple, straightforward question, how frequently should the data be reported, right? Um, oh, okay. Uh, well, I wrote the buckets. I didn't so I'm, okay. So so I, so, so the, the big buckets I would I define them as SRO versus administrative role, if any. Uh, second big bucket is data reporting, including frequency. Uh, the third big bucket is parental rights slash notifications, like in what circumstances should parents get notified. Um, the fourth big bucket is training, particularly of SROs, uh, what types of training, and SEPTA had a lot of suggestions in particular on that. Uh, fifth is curriculum, you know, is it mandatory, is it optional, is there some kind of review? Um, uh, there's also student monitoring, student rights, like in what situation, and, and I kind of conflate student data privacy into that, so SEPTA had some suggestions like wanting to have, you know, certain knowledge of students go to the SROs. Other people had data privacy as a priority, not that certain data not going to the SROs unless certain conditions were met. And then student rights, like are they advised of their rights when they get arrested, detained, searched, whatever. Um, uh, and then a, a, a last big bucket is kind of the, the searches, the detentions, the physical force, investigations, hearings, like that whole kind of, I, I would call it the quasi-judicial process or the investigative process. What, you know, how, what does that look like? How should we formulate it? Um, and, and I'd toss into that immigration because uh, you raised a lot of great immigration questions. What kind of access should they have to the campus, data, et cetera? Can I ask a, a dumb question? What would take precedence, in a, and this might have to go to legal counsel of both organizations, both the county and the schools, I don't know. But what would take precedence? I read a lot of the, con well, I read them, went through three times, just 40, 50 pages of stuff. And there was a lot of comments in there that seemed to me to be 
already in conflict with the uh, SRNR, which every fall the parent and the student signs. And the thing goes back in. Now, did you just raise a couple of comments there that could be in contrary to this? Mm -hmm. So, my question is does the SRO slash police department on the county side through this MOU, is that going to take precedence? Would the, because it's in school, it's in a facility uh, where teachers and, and FCPS is administrating and teaching the children, will the SRNR, if the county puts out, excuse me, if the FCPS puts out, with a very nice comment, Dr. Brayman, in the beginning on page one uh, letter, that each parent, guardian, and each student, kindergarten to 12th grade, all have to sign and adhere to. And in there, I sat through numerous school board meetings until the wee hours of the night, uh, all day Monday sessions, when these things were discussed and debated by school board members prior to going out to the parents of what can an SRO do, how are the kids notified, how are the parents notified, is the SRO there, he's not there, or she's not there, et cetera, et cetera. And I think maybe that somebody's got to look and filter stuff through this along with a couple of your other buckets uh, would be good. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, um, on that point, I think uh, not only the student rights and responsibilities, there are general orders, there are school policies, there are reporting requirements in the school manual. All of those will need to be revised to be consistent with this. There are multiple that, I'm, you're, you're going against my point. My point is, does this have to adhere to this? No. Does this have to adhere to the general orders? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. In, in the document, it does state that the uh, SRO will uh, be knowledgeable of and follow the rules of the, S the SRR. Correct. And, and several, there's comments in there about general order. I think it was 605 and uh, what, 605.1 or something? And what has to be done? When, of course, that's done annually. I think in June is, is when that's revised on an annual basis, it's in the first line or two of the, of the general order, so that if we do this MOU and we're going through the draft, then what takes precedence? Does the general order supersede this? Does this supersede the general orders? Does this supersede SR&R? Does this not? SR&R is going to have to be revamped to, to come in because this is going to supersede F. I would, su I would suggest that this would not this would be the document. I would suggest that the general order would be the documents that should be going, and then this should go and respect those two documents from those two departments, vice us changing the whole kit and caboodle and then telling the police to go back and change their general orders, tell the schools to go back and change their, the school board to go back and change their SR and R, and, and because the community of these people here sat around and changed this MOU. <laughs> May I, may I follow up on my point? This M MOU is meaningless if what is going to prevail is everything that the school district and the police have written that is contrary to it. Those have to be revised or it is meaningless. It will have no effect. Okay, so, so we need to have a process in here that is done. We make recommendations that uh, <coughs> there be a, a review of But it's more places. I can give you a list of 20 policies in the schools and at least five of the general orders that need to be revised if the policies that a number of us have recommended are adopted. Well, then those should be done before the MOU. Yeah. Well, remember, this MOU is already in place. Exactly. So keep going with the same MOU for the next two years while you get general orders and get SRNR revamped. That's what you're saying. Why are you here? Just to antagonize you. Huh? Just to antagonize you. That's why I'm here. Okay.
back to the bucket. <laughs> So for the SLC, I don't know if you have it lower or something, but we had uh, two comments of things we wanted to add, um, or bullets or paragraphs. Uh, one was that the SLC shall compile data on all SRO actions and include the rest. That's that's coming down the okay. And the other one was about uh, attending PTA meeting. Okay. Yeah. section in which we incorporate some of the ideas with uh, Mr. Yannick suggested. Strengthen the idea that that discussion is also to be talked about the effectiveness of what had happened the previous year, the previous quarter. Did this So this the way it sits is just talking about trends, but you should discuss data trends. Well, this true. is more talking about the frequency. Uh, yeah, the frequency, yeah. but also in this, this is where you include language that might say, uh, discuss data trends, the effectiveness of what happened the last quarter, and how can we remedy or mitigate problems and things of this sort that will represent suggestions to ensure the uh, SRO program is effective in dealing with uh, these types can of issues. Can you put that note there because later yeah. on in the document that is mentioned. That's also mentioned, but sort of reinforcing these types when we have these discussions, it's not just to talk about data, it's actually to talk about effectiveness and communicate with each, each party. Good. 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 people to walk away and feel like something happened and it's going to keep yeah. moving yeah. forward, right? And maybe I'm just still a little confused. This has your name on it. You're saying you put in stuff and it's the way it got. 
I mean, I, mm -hmm. let me just say it this way. At, at 845, I can read all these documents and pull to, well, I can, and bring a revised version after working with Ed. What I think I'm seeing, what, what in what you put doesn't fit or match what you put in, I do want to know, right? I mean, otherwise, if there's things, because there's 50 pages here, are there pieces that you put in? Because in a way, this meeting well, is I guess kind of let's take it out then. I mean, if, it, if it's not important, then it was taken out for a reason, I guess. Like, why not just leave it in there and just say he to include? He did okay, so, in so, okay, so that can happen. So, to, for all his events, to and include. Put, okay, call it to include. And then Arrests, questionings, searches, search and seizures, and use of force. Surely one thing you'd have would have to do is PTA slash PTO because not all schools have PTAs. Some have PTOs. Right. I, I guess all I'll, I'll, I'll offer Shirley on our behalf. Ed and I can do the work. What is not, you put your comments up here, what's not reflective of those comments and let us come back. We've got the idea of the principles, the buckets. Are there things that are missing that you yes. put input? Let us have those, and then we can use that to inform what we bring next month. I, I think what we, what we have here is my handout, and what I have, and I'm trying to track with you. I'm not tracking with you because you said in the beginning this is condensed of everybody's comments, and I think we're all confused. And I agree with Dr. Brabrand. Uh, everything that you're talking about articulating, I have, he has, and uh, you know this, this is a little bit different than it's further down, it's, it's over here, it's over there, uh, so it's hard to track. Some have a difficult time. With, with all due respect though, to the idea of you all coming back with something based on this, that short circuits the discussion. And Kofi and I both made significant input on the data points, for example, as did others. Uh, and there are good points in about four or five different comments on this issue that we would like in there and discussed to reach a consensus on. We can't uh, agree, and the document I have has all your comments, and, and well, 
what we're offering is, uh, th this is hard to track, we'll come back with a revised yeah. MOU document with all your changes okay. in it, sure, all, sure. all of them, and I think we can work with a lot of these. Uh, th this, um, we're not disagreeing, I think it's hard to track. Yeah. Okay. If, if we need, and I'm, I'm assuming that this is okay, <laughs> sure. if, we, if we need another meeting, we'll do that. I think the important, the important thing is that we try as best we can to make sure that we have got something that can be used for training uh, of principals and SROs as the new school year begins. Because otherwise, you know, they'll be working under the old S, you know, uh, MOU. And that would be unfortunate because I think there's a lot that we would like to see change they feel that there are things that need to be changed, and so we need to try to try to make that happen. Okay. So, why don't we take the superintendent and the chief up on their offer? They've got everybody's detailed yeah. comments as well as Shirley's uh, attempt to try to consolidate those, but they've got everything. They'll come back at our next meeting uh, with a document, and you know they can try as best they can to get that out in advance. We'll try to do that. And, and just to clarify, because we talked about whether or not we can talk in between these meetings, and uh, so we're okay <laughs> doing that for now. Yeah, that's that is a good question, and you you heard what I read. So should we wait till? Because it helps to speed up the process. I, 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 I understand that. It would be great if you would handle side meetings to include everybody as opposed to a small group. The, the session uh, law is just different things coming in Because you have some over on this side of the top over here that don't have the same. say on the wrong foot because we didn't get everything that we wanted to say out of the way we're not good with it. All right, so I've got a deal for you. <laughs> so uh, the chief and the superintendent have, uh, have said that they could make themselves available on the 19th. So that would be, so our next meeting is on Monday, the 16th, Monday, and then a couple days later, Thursday, the 19th. Uh, they could make themselves available for another meeting. Especially if we can't come so to a resolution with the things that we share on the 16th. And, but it could just be a placeholder in case we feel the discussion yeah. extends and beyond that Monday. There's a sweetener to the deal. So on Thursday, the 19th of July, I have my concerts in the park in Dennis, uh, right here at the Government Center. It starts at 5.30 and by 7 o'clock. And so, Beer and wine. So you can enjoy a concert uh, and and then come on uh, in here for if we if we need to uh, for a meeting on the 19th. So mark your calendars for a potential meeting. Uh, if we don't finish everything at our at our next meeting uh, on next Monday. Okay, Ted, you got to go get some good points. Yes, about five or six good ones this time.
budget does it come out of the school and police department and so I just wanted to make sure that as, as um, Chief Rossler and uh, Superintendent Brabrand goes back and tries to incorporate our um, comments that they also take the time to answer the questions that were submitted. Okay. Um, and, those are, and those are budget questions. Yes. Yeah. And this is not necessarily a budget question. This is how they work. Sure. Uh, but I, th I think how something, I think, I think it would serve. The funding is in the MRI. I think it served, yeah, I mean, the, the funding is mentioned the in the MOU, and we like, the school is is all for okay. Okay. So we're just asking, I'm just asking as a point of information, what is the cost of all this? The county pays for the SROs, so that comes out of the county side of the budget, not the school side of the budget. Part of the police the department. The liaison officer is paid for by, is that the one position? Yeah, by the school. Page 179 of the budget. Uh, on the existing MOU, on page three, for the funding for the. Right, so I'm, I'm asking for funding amounts. Uh, that's, uh, uh, I'll get, get that answer, but it's available on, on the website, but I'll get it through uh, Clayton to get all to your budget breakdown. If you, if you go to the computer and Google school resource officer program, um, this would be. Budget book number one. Fairfax County. Police Department's right in there. I'll, I'll, I'll get that for you. Okay, page 179, I think. Page Shirley, here. I would like to make sure that something that I felt was very important in putting comments, the one Fairfax program, I've heard Superintendent Brayman talk about equity, but the one Fairfax program, a lot of effort went into that. I'd like to see in this MOU that there's a commitment to that program, and I'd like to see it named. Because just talking about equity in a general sense uh, isn't enough. It's like the, the work's already been done, and the town is committed to it. It's, it's big. It's with all the rest of it. That could be part of the guiding principles. Yeah. That, uh, you know, that we can have a section. SRO program is consistent with the yeah. 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 so yeah. it's If we have additional input that we want to give to the, uh, the, the chief and uh, the superintendent, like student input, who do we send that to? To Clayton. To the Clayton. Okay. Format because we have to What format is that? Comment sheet. Comment sheet. And then we will have a record on it. Okay. 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 Uh, I would, would, I'd like to, to see agreement in there that's not there now, but I know you have to talk about it to revise all policies, MOUs, record manual, etc., etc., to be consistent with the new policies. Now, understanding that that's not going to happen overnight, but that that's a process that will be begun. Uh, as far as general orders, uh, operating procedures, uh, I, I've been taking notes, uh, you know, just the last one about one Fairfax, uh, put that in the general order. Uh, clearly, the terminology needs to sink in, uh, and the officers need to be aware of what that terminology is, that it's not just the MOU, because that, you know, officers don't generally read MOUs, although the SROs are trained on them, the, all the other officers and employees need to know about it. So yes, uh, we'll follow through our general orders and make sure terminology is updated once we have this. It's not merely terminology, though. Yeah. Um, some of them are processes for the Part of the discipline process is going into everybody's well, discipline. Hopefully, it's not part of the discipline. <laughs> 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 but it, it 
this because we're saying here that they're not a part of this preliminary process and the, <laughs> and the forum as well that they're planning is to walk through the uh, preliminary process. What, what, just a point of clarification, uh, Diane's question, uh, one, of, one of your committee members, uh, I don't know his name because he's sitting in for someone, but you, you last week suggested to me a, a FAQ section, and I think that gets to it, which we can do some, you know, on my behalf uh, as, as your chief uh, out to the community with the uh, FAQs so we all understand what it is. And I know you kind of volunteered to help me on that. I, I, I did, and, and in fact, one of my general comments, if you, well, I don't know if it's in this document, because on the 51 pages, I suggested really you need to revise SRR, as Tim said. I think you also need to uh, put together a brochure because there's varying levels of information, right? Most parents, all they want is a little, you know, three trifold brochure. But you also need FAQs that should be online because people say, well, I want to know more about this. They don't want to dig through an, a 20 page MOU or 51 pages of comments, as the case may be, they, you know, and they want to look for the question that they can find and, and go there. And if they really want to go to the Virginia Code or whatever it is, then um, then they can they can go to that. But but no one really wants to dig through all these hyperlinks. And if I may, since I'm talking, uh, may I <laughs> may I just offer that um, I I I'm a, I've done a lot of MOUs, and I don't know if if you know either either I can help you guys, or maybe I can create a competing version to compare contrast, you know, um, because putting, you know, not that it's fun, and not like I have nothing else going on in my life, so, um, and it's recorded that I have no, yeah, let's no talk after the meeting, yeah. and uh, that way uh, you can represent the committee at some point in time. Not like I'm electing myself, but. Um, <laughs> I'd be happy to help. Okay. If I can incorporate comments, okay, it's um, beautiful. I know the hour is getting close. I just want to say um, one thing, and, and, and Kofi shared it earlier about faith. I'm a person of faith, and I'm a person of faith that I was here 20 years and I came back because I love this county and I love this school system. I haven't been here over the last five or six years. I've been here in one year and we're changing the MOU. When I arrived, there were concerns about hiring practices, Kofi shared, and we changed our hiring practices this year year. I understand, and even after all this is over, not everybody's going to be exactly on the same page. That's just natural. But keep faith that you're in the right place, the place that's going to lead this country in these kinds of issues and all the other issues that get people divided is here with the kind of leadership we have in government, the leadership we have in school system, the leadership we have in community. And look, I told Kofi, he knows, I called him, look, I want to work with you. We don't need, we don't need, we need to spend more time in dialogue, which is what these meetings are doing, and less time just shouting past each other. And I think the more we do it, the more we can get real work done. We can get real work done. And I appreciate all of you giving your Monday nights to do this, and I, I think we're going to have a better, uh, SRO MOU this coming year than what we've had before. So I appreciate it. Good job, NAACP. Yeah, NAACP. I would like to thank again each of you for all of your comments. People power. But it's not quick. And like Dr. Brigham said, we and the chief are trying to get the revision out to it as quickly as possible. If you have other comments, send those.